So now I'm going to explain how the investigators determined the AMPA to NMDA current ratios in mice in which optogenetic stimulation was paired with shock compared to the mice in which the optogenetic stimulation and shock were unpaired. This slide shows a synapse made by an axon from the auditory cortex or the medial geniculate on an amygdala neuron. The axon is transfected with channel rhodopsin. An electrode is patched on the amygdala neuron and will record synaptic currents in voltage clamp mode. The membrane is clamped at minus 60 millivolts. Next, the light guide is activated by blue light, which excites the transfected axon, causing it to generate an action potential. When the action potential reaches the axon terminal, it causes the release of glutamate, which then binds to both the AMPA and NMDA receptors, causing their gates to open. For simplicity, I'm going to get rid of the presynaptic axon and just look at the amygdala neuron while glutamate is bound to the AMPA and NMDA receptors and their gates are open. Next, let's add sodium and potassium ions to both the extracellular and intracellular fluids. The sodium ions are shown as yellow balls and are concentrated in the extracellular fluid while the potassium ions are shown as purple balls and are more concentrated in the intracellular fluid. I point out again that the AMPA receptors are open and thus ions can pass through their pores. The gates on the NMDA receptors are also open, but their pores are not conductive because the pore is blocked by a magnesium ion shown as the gray ball there. Just as a reminder, the equilibrium potential for sodium is plus 55 millivolts, while the equilibrium potential for potassium is about minus 60 millivolts in these cells. Consequently, the driving force on sodium, that is the difference between the equilibrium potential and the membrane potential, is 115 millivolts. In contrast, the driving force on potassium is zero. There is no driving force because the membrane potential is equal to the potassium equilibrium potential. So, there is a large force, but only on sodium, which acts to drive sodium ions from the extracellular fluid into the cell. Next, let's trace the currents that flow through the open AMPA receptors when the membrane is clamped at minus 60 millivolts. First, there is a large influx of sodium because of the large driving force acting on sodium ions. But there is no net flow of potassium because the membrane potential is clamped at the potassium equilibrium potential. One in, one out. When glutamate disassociates, the NMDA gates close more slowly than the gates on the AMPA receptors because NMDA receptors bind glutamate more tightly than do AMPA receptors. Watch. This associates, first the AMPA gate closes, a moment later it disassociates, and the NMDA gate closes. The inward sodium current is shown as the blue line on the right. This trace is the current that flowed only through the AMPA receptors while they were open. No current could flow through the NMDA receptors because the pore was plugged by the magnesium ion. Now we change conditions and clamp the membrane potential at plus 40 millivolts, thereby making the inside of the cell very positive. The first thing to note is that the magnesium plug is expelled from the NMDA receptor pore by the positive membrane potential. The second important point is that the driving forces on sodium and potassium have changed dramatically. There is now a large driving force acting on, on potassium and a much smaller force acting on sodium. Indeed, the driving force on sodium is now only plus 15 millivolts.
while the driving force on potassium is now minus 100 millivolts. Now consider the flow of the two currents when glutamate binds to the receptors and opens the gates as shown here. Now there is a very small inward current carried by sodium through both receptors, but a large net outward current carried by potassium that also th flows through both the AMPA and NMDA receptors. Remember that the NMDA gates close more slowly than AMPA receptor gates because the NMDA receptors bind glutamate more tightly than do the AMPA receptors. What that means is that the NMDA current continues even after the AMPA receptors have closed and no current is flowing through the AMPA receptors. The net outward current when the membrane is clamped at plus 40 millivolts is plotted as the red line. So let's expand the current records and evaluate how the investigators determined the ratio of AMPA to NMDA currents. The blue current, as bracketed by the two orange lines, shows the AMPA current when the membrane was clamped at minus 60 millivolts. Since the NMDA receptor is plugged by a magnesium ion, as shown in the synapse, the record is only of the AMPA current and shows both the maximum current through the AMPA receptors and the duration of that current since the current only flowed while the AMPA gates were open. The current amplitude is shown by the orange double-headed arrow. Next, the membrane potential is clamped at plus 40 millivolts, which causes the magnesium plug to be expelled from the pore of the NMDA receptor. The portion of the current record that represents the time when current was flowing through both AMPA and NMDA receptors is bracketed by the green lines. Following that period, the AMPA receptors close, but the NMDA receptors are still open, and during that period, a smaller amount of current flows, but only through the NMDA receptors. That period is indicated by the green double arrow labeled NMDA only. The peak or maximal NMDA only current is shown as the vertical green arrow. The AMPA to NMDA ratio that was shown for the unpaired condition in the paper titled engineering and memory with LTP and LTD is reproduced in the upper left portion here. That ratio is about 2. If we compare the peak AMPA current with the peak NMDA only current, it can be seen that the AMPA current is twice as large as the NMDA current. That is how the investigator arrived at the AMPA to NMDA ratio for the paired condition. Now let's consider the currents generated for the paired condition where the shock and optogenetic stimulation were presented at the same time. In the paired condition, long-term potentiation was generated at the synapse which added additional AMPA receptors, those. The membrane here is clamped at minus 60 millivolts, so only the AMPA receptors are conductive. The pores of the NMDA receptors are plugged by magnesium ions. Glutamate is bound to the receptors so their gates are open. The large driving force on sodium drives sodium ions into the cell, which is then terminated when the, gl when the glutamate diffuses off of the receptors. The current flowing through the AMPA receptors while the gates were open is shown as the blue trace. Now the membrane is clamped at plus 40 millivolts, which causes the magnesium ion to be expelled from the pore of the NMDA receptors. Glutamate is bound on the gates, so all the receptors are open. There is a small driving force on sodium and hence a small inward sodium current. 
but there is a large outward potassium current that flows through both the AMPA and NMDA receptors. Next, glutamate first diffuses off of the AMPA receptors, which close, but the NMDA receptors are still open and continue to conduct a smaller outward potassium current until the transmitter diffuses off of the NMDA receptors. Watch. Diffuse off the AMPA, they close, but the NMDA is still open, then they close. The outward current evoked when the membrane is clamped at plus 40 millivolts is shown as the red trace. Finally, we consider the AMPA to NMDA ratio for the paired condition in the same way we did for the unpaired condition. First, let's expand the record with, so we can see it in greater detail. The AMPA generated current when the membrane was clamped at minus 60 millivolts is bracketed by the orange lines. The AMPA and NMDA current generated when the membrane was clamped at plus 40 millivolts is bracketed by the green lines. And the NMDA current that flowed after the AMPA channels were closed is shown by the double-headed green arrow labeled NMDA only. The orange arrow shows the maximum AMPA current, while the vertical green arrow shows the maximum NMDA current. Now transpose first the AMPA orange arrow and then the green NMDA arrow. The amplitude of the AMPA current is more than four times as large as the, AMP, as the NMDA current. The reason is that the NMDA currents were about the same in the unpaired and paired conditions, because no additional NMDA receptors were added to the synapse by long-term potentiation. In contrast, AMPA receptors were added, thereby substantially increasing the AMPA current in the paired condition over that evoked in the unpaired condition. This is why the AMPA to NMDA ratio increased in the paired condition, and this is how the investigators measured those ratios. So the conclusions to this study are that the unpaired shock and optogenetic stimulation yields an AMPA to NMDA ratio of about 2, whereas the paired shock and optogenetic stimulation yields an AMPA to NMDA ratio of about 4 or even larger due to the generation of LTP and the addition of AMPA receptors at the synapse.